So let's let start on behalf of your URAM committee. I would like to extend a very warm, uh, warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much and bonjour from uh, Montreal. Uh, to our special guest, uh, we appreciate taking the time to join us today. We have a really special session and this is uh, a golden opportunity for you guys to, uh, uh, to discuss with the, the editors uh, to understand how to play the game for publication. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let me present them and uh, start uh, the session. Uh, we have four uh, editors, uh, Michael Murney from European Management Review. Hi, Michael. Uh, Maruna Radu Lefebvre from Entrepreneurship and Original Development. Hi, Maruna. And uh, Martina Silva from Management Learning. Hi, Maria, Martina. And Dimo Dimo from the Journal of Business Venturing Insight. Uh, hi, Dimo. Uh, good, good morning, everybody. Uh, so um, the objective of the session uh, is to introduce the, the journals from the editors, discuss factors to consider when choosing a journal, give advice on writing papers for successful publication, and of course, highlight common pitfalls to avoid. Uh, as I said, uh, let's learn how to play the, the game. And uh, I'm looking forward to have a couple of questions. So uh, I mean, if you see some questions in the chat box, let me, let me know, uh, please. Uh, maybe we can uh, plan for 15 minutes presentation for each editor and then jump to the questions. So, uh, Michael, uh, let's start with you. Thanks very much indeed. And uh, thank you uh, to the organizing committee of the doctoral consortium for, for having me. I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to have the opportunity to speak with you today very briefly about European Management Review, and I'll also try and take uh, your questions as we uh, as we move through through the session. Um, I wanted to issue a virtual wel welcome to Ireland, uh, which is where I'm located. Um, I would, as I suspect with most people in the audience, I would dearly like to be with you all uh, and enjoy each other's company. But unfortunately, uh, that's not uh, that's not to be at the moment. But uh, we very much hope for for brighter days ahead, and uh, that soon we will once again be able to combine and exchange uh, in the sanctity of the uh, the conference room. Um, so my name is Michael Morley, uh, and I'm currently serving as editor in chief of European Management Review, which is journal uh, which is URAM's uh, official journal. Um, and I'm very honoured to be in that position at the moment, um, and I will be in role until next January. Uh, and then the incoming editor-in-chief is uh, Professor Anna Granduri from uh, Bocconi University uh, in Italy. Um, I'm here today as part of a team, and, and quite a big team actually. European Management Review is a general management journal, and as a result of that, we've got a, a diverse editorial team. Uh, in addition uh, to myself, uh, firstly, there are five editors. Uh, there's Vlad Weiman from uh, California Lutheran University. Um, there's uh, Desislava Dekova, who's at uh, Vienna University of Economics and Business Administration. Uh, there's Bill Lee, who's at Sheffield University. Uh, there is uh, Pascal Lamassant, who's at Paris Tech. And finally, there's uh, Nada Korakadabatsi, who's uh, at Henley Business School in the UK. Um, and in addition to that team of editors, we also have a team of associate editors. Uh, currently, we've got 12. Uh, and each of these colleagues brings a particular field or a particular specialism to the editorial process, given that we, we achieve a pretty diverse range of, of, of manuscripts. So our team consists of people in strategy, in marketing, innovation, entrepreneurship, family business, finance, HR, OB, uh, and marketing communications uh, additional. So it's a, it's, a, it's a large team and it's a, a, a pretty diverse team of necessity because of the nature of the journal as a general journal. Um, we've got an editorial board of more than 100 members uh, and those members come from, I think, about 25 different 
different countries. So again, um, we've got a particular interest in what we refer to as a, a contextual understanding of, of management uh, approaches, policies, practices, etc. And in order to give some expression to that idea of context, of course, we have very much to have, again, a, a diverse a, editorial board who can help us uh, and assist in understanding the various contexts in which uh, people are doing their research. Uh, we publish at the moment four issues per year. Um, the downloads at the moment for the journal are about 100, 135,000 downloads, I think, in 2020. Um, and that's increasing year on year. And I think that's, uh, again, testament to the reach of the journal uh, over, the past, over the past number of years. Um, it's available uh, in about 10,000 institutions. Uh, and as I said, about 135,000 uh, downloads each year. Uh, in 2020, I think the most downloaded paper was downloaded about about 4,000 about 4, times. It's also widely um, uh, widely indexed, uh, and the current impact factor I think is about 1.533. Uh, uh, and each year, uh, we've got a recognition system where we try to give do recognition to what we consider to be uh, the best article for the year previous, uh, the best reviewer for the year previous, and obviously also the most uh, the most downloaded and the most uh, the most cited papers. And they're part of, if you like, our overall recognition system uh, for for the journal, which I think is important for authors uh, in in the field in which in in the field in which we work. Um, uh, the acceptance rate for the journal is about 14 14 percent um i never like to uh speak about uh, this issue of desk rejection and rejection rates and so on but nonetheless it is an important part i guess of the conversation and our rejection uh, desk rejection rate runs at about 80 percent that's necessary because of how the peer review process works and how it is we've got to engage in a very meaningful way with the reviewers that we have so we have to make uh, early decisions on certain manuscripts that we're not entirely sure will likely make it uh, make it through uh, the, the the review process. Um, in terms of the geography of where our papers come from, it's also pretty uh, pretty heterogeneous. Actually, we get about twenty percent of our submissions from uh, from the United Kingdom. Uh, about uh, twelve percent come from France. Uh, about six to seven percent come from Spain. We get about five percent from Germany, five percent from uh, from China, about five percent from Italy, um, about five percent from Turkey, if I remember correctly. And then after this, it's uh, it's um, a, a much more, uh, as I said, heterogeneous rate of, of submission from from different contexts. Let me just take a few minutes uh, to talk about the aims and scopes because uh, and scope of the journal. One of the things that's obviously very important is that submitting authors are, 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 if you like, aware of the scope and are operating within that particular scope in making a decision to submit. So the first thing to say is that we're really uh, interested in trying to advance understanding of management in a range of settings, in private setting organizations, in public setting organizations, also in the voluntary sector. And we try to do this through a combination of both empirical papers and conceptual theoretical papers. So we take both kinds of work. Uh, we take empirical pieces, but we also take uh, conceptual articles. And then finally, we also have a dedicated section on methodology. Uh, the section in European Management Review is called Methodology Matters, and in this particular section, we take papers that are specifically focused on aspects of methodology and advancing the conversation about particular methodological or analytical uh, techniques. We're also interested in uh, informing, if you like, a European view. That's not to suggest that the scholarship uh, must all come from Europe or that it must all have an exclusively European focus. But we do try to have a strong European debate because in some senses, there is a view, of course, that European scholarship is of a certain kind. Uh, it has a relatively diverse tradition. Uh, it has a relatively pluralist tradition. And in as much as we try to give expression to the European aspects of the journal, then we try to embrace those things. A degree of pluralism, uh, a degree of 
uh, methodological heterogeneity, which I think is uh, very much uh, part of that European uh, conversation. Uh, we also strive, if you like, to ensure that we can embrace the multiplicity of methods that people offer. So we've published qualitative papers, we publish quantitative papers, we publish mixed methods papers. And we're very, very keen on uh, uh, ensuring that we get a range of submissions across those different uh, methodological traditions. Uh, so important to bear in mind, both empirical and conceptual, and on the empirical front, we're very much open to a range of very different uh, methodological approaches. Now, one of the things we were asked to uh, briefly speak to was uh, some tips or some do's and don'ts uh, in relation to uh, planning and, and making uh, your submission. And there was a couple of things that I wanted to call attention to here, many of which I think will probably also subsequently uh, come up in our conversation. First thing I wanted to say was be really familiar with the journal, get to know its aims, its scope, its content, and in as much as possible, try and connect with debates that are going on in the journal. I think this is very important as part of building on the repertoire of knowledge that exists within the journal. That's not always possible. And on occasion, people are breaking new ground that hasn't necessarily been part of the conversation. But it is very important, I think, to acknowledge previous conversations, acknowledge where the emphasis has been, and in as much as those debates have been rehearsed in this instance in European Management Review, then of course, uh, connect with those. I think it's also uh, an allied point, it's also important to understand, as I said, the contours of the conversation to date more generally. It's really important that you give expression, if you like, to what it is we know about this particular phenomenon and then to choose your point of entry into the conversation. And this, this is a very important part of the writing process in my view. Uh, how it is and where it is, as the wonderful Anne Hoff said, you're joining the specific conversation that has a pre-existing conversation going on. And really honing in and articulating where you're joining, I think is a very important part of the research journey that your paper is likely uh, to, be, to be on. I would also say, uh, uh, you know, follow in as much as you can at all, follow good writing convention. And what I describe as a clear route map through the paper. Uh, I'm really persuaded by this idea of a route map through the paper for the reader. And sometimes one of the ways of doing that is putting yourself in the reader's chair. How will the reader see my paper? I think this is a very important thing to do for, for, for any writer. It's not always possible to predict how a reader is, is going to see your paper, but in as much as you can stand in their shoes, I think this is very, very important. I would also say, create your own review process in advance of making any submission. And I'm certain this will have been part of the doctoral conversation this morning. Uh, ensure that uh, colleagues, uh, trusted friends, um, others, read your work before you make a submission. And this really generally improves the quality of the submission before it gets uh, to uh, an editor's uh, desk. I would also say, you know, be realistic about the, the, the claims that you're making, the claims about prior knowledge, the claims about uh, the advances that your paper make, uh, and the claims about what it is one can empirically say uh, vested in the methodology that, uh, that you've employed. And finally, I would say by way of dues, be careful about how you craft your, your letter to the editor. This is an opportunity to convey key messages that an editor will uh, show due diligence on and will pick up on. So I, I put a certain amount of store in the editorial, in the letter to the editor itself. I know others put less, but for me, uh, there are important opportunities for signaling about a paper uh, in, the, in the letter to the editor. And I think that's something also worth spending a little bit of time on. A um, couple of other uh, uh, don'ts, if you like, uh, are issues that perhaps uh, often arise for why papers uh, uh, don't make it, make it through the system. Um, one of the things I'm certain you'll have been hearing a lot about this morning is, of course, the issue of contribution. And there is no doubt that the centrality, the importance, 
and the articulation of the contribution of a manuscript are really, really important. You need to be very clear, not just about the phenomenon that you're investigating, but also how advancing our understanding of that phenomenon is going to contribute to the knowledge base already pre-existing. And also, if you like, push that field forward in some, in some way. So that idea of contribution, I think, is, is very, very uh, important. Another reason, of course, why a lot of papers uh, don't make it through is they simply don't fit. And this is the idea of showing due diligence uh, about the journal in advance. Uh, certainly a significant percentage of the papers that we get are excellent quality papers, but they simply don't fit with the journal. And as a result of that, we have to make very early decisions about why it is uh, the authors would probably be better placed by sending that, uh, that paper to, to an alternative journal. And in sending it to an alternative journal, our motivation is often because the paper will command a better readership in an alternative journal uh, to, uh, in this instance, for example, uh, European Management Review. Another issue uh, that I think is very important is the whole issue of problem methodological fit. Uh, and so I think one of the reasons for uh, for a lot of papers, not making it through the, the system is this whole idea of uh, methodology problem fit. And so, so the phenomenon being investigated can be investigated, of course, in different ways, but it's really important to articulate why the methodology employed represents a really good opportunity to address that phenomenon. And therefore, it passes the test of good problem uh, methodological fit. Um, Another don't, uh, and it's an important one, is self-plagiarism. Uh, there is an increasing uh, issue, I think, in a lot of journals around self-plagiarism, uh, much of which, of course, arises because of the, um, the whole pressure to, uh, to publish and to have academic output and so on. It's really important to ensure that the manuscript is original and that attribution is given uh, to all those necessary sources, including uh, attribution to uh, your own uh, your own previous uh, previous work. Um, two other uh, very obvious observations, I guess, the whole issue of uh, journal guidelines in terms of length and style and referencing and format and so on. It's really important to get that right early on uh, and to have it uh, uh, appropriate for uh, the journal that you're submitting to. Uh, otherwise, I think uh, you simply you know you begin uh, the journey in the wrong place. So ensuring that it is appropriate, not just in terms of topic and content and methodologically and so on, but also appropriate by way of how it is the paper is actually presented uh, for, the, for the journal. And the other uh, don't, I would say, is um, don't resubmit a paper that has been rejected uh, at another stage to the journal unless the rejection has also offered a reject but a resubmit. So in European Management Review, on occasion, we do reject papers very early on in the process, but we leave the door open for a resubmission where we say to the authors, we think you've submitted your paper too early. Uh, we think the arguments are not as rehearsed as they might be, or the phenomenon as explored as it might be. And if you do that, we think the paper is going to be uh, rather different to where the paper is at at the moment. And as a result of that, we think uh, the paper would be a new submission. That's perfectly fine for resubmitting as a new submission. But if a paper has been through our process and has unfortunately uh, been rejected, then we would say, please don't resubmit because we have already given full consideration to, to, to that particular manuscript. If on the other hand side, we have invited uh, post-rejection, uh, a different kind of manuscript, but linked down the line, that's uh, slightly, slightly different. Um, finally, um, I would say uh, what's important about European Management Review is we're a general journal, we take papers across the range, we've got a diverse approach in terms of uh, the kind of scholarship uh, uh, that, we, that we appreciate uh, empirically and conceptually and also methodologically. So we're, 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 we're open on that front. Uh, and importantly, I think the scholarship in European Management Review is, is visible. And as a result of that, of course, if papers uh, do make it through the system, we're very much uh, keen to work with authors to ensure that their papers uh, command the audience that they, that they deserve uh, uh, down the line. Um, 
There are my tips on do's and don'ts, uh, my couple of observations about why it is I think European Management Review is a good home. And uh, I want to just uh, reassure everybody here today that we are really looking forward to trying to receive your best work. So please do submit it for consideration. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Michael. These are really priceless advices for all, uh, for all of us. Uh, so let's uh, invite uh, Maruna from uh, Entrepreneurship and Regional Development. What about uh, the journal? Thank you. Thank you, Maher. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the, the organizing committee for, for inviting me today to speak about entrepreneurship and regional development. I prepared a short presentation for you. I, I'll try to share my, my screen. You'll tell me if it, if it works. Does it work? Do you see it? Not yet. Here we go. And now? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, many thanks. So I, I'll try to keep it uh, within 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and of course, I'm open to all, all the questions that you may ask either, you know, using your the voice or maybe the, the chat box after presentation, because for the moment, I only can see my own <laughs> screen. So I, I, I can't have access to the chat. Um, so um, a couple of, of metrics about uh, entrepreneurship and, and regional development. So um, what you see on the screen is our impact factor um, for 2019 and also the impact factor for uh, the five years and the citation score. So we, we publish uh, eight issues per year. So approximately uh, 80 articles. Our acceptance rate uh, is about 2% with most of the papers being rejected at the desk level as for the European Management Review, which is, which is quite usual, I think, because of fit issues or because of issues related um, to how papers are, are crafted. And I will also emphasize the importance of our aims and scope because we look for papers uh, who actually position within the scope of the journal. But yeah, this in, in a couple of minutes. So in terms of, ag of the agenda, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the editor of chief and the, the incoming editor in chief of, of the journal. But of course, uh, we work as a team at the editorial level, so I will, I will present you our associate editors. Then um, I will emphasize our new aims and scope, which have been elaborated in March last uh, this year. And then a couple of words about our communication system, which is completely renewed and helps you get a better access to the journal content and to understand what is our philosophy, I, I guess. And then a couple of words about our news in terms of words and special issues calls. So first, a few words about our editorial team. So as you all know, um, the former editor-in-chief of Entrepreneurship and Regional Development was Alistair Anderson, distinguished professor of entrepreneurship at Lancaster University, who passed away um, suddenly in March this year. I have been appointed uh, editor-in-chief in February this year, so just one month um, before Alistair left us. And he planned to actually work as an associate editor in, in our team. I knew Alistair for, for several years um, from Odensia, where, where I work as an entrepreneurship professor, and Alistair was our international affiliated uh, faculty, so he was our, our mentor. A couple of words about myself, because I think that it's very useful to know who the editors are. Uh, not only what is the aims of sco and scope of each journal, but who are the people <laughs> you are sending your papers. So my, I'm, a, I'm a professor of entrepreneurship since, since 2005, but as a background, I have a quite heterogeneous background in social sciences. So I have a PhD in social psychology, and I have a former background in Romania and France in social and political sciences. So this all, already offers you an idea of what um, I may <laughs> look for um, in papers regarding entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial phenomena. And now a couple of words about the associate editors. 
Alistair uh, had a team uh, composed of three associate editors, Sarah Jack, Dilani Jayawarma, and Johan uh, Gadeforth. So each of them with their own um, preferred topics, Sarah Jack worked um, several years on networks, social capital, business incubators, Dilani um, on internationalization, resourcing, and small firms, Johan, the beautiful contribution on rural entrepreneurship. And then recently we extended the team with three uh, additional associate editors, which you see now on the screen. Natalia Vercinina, um, who, who works mainly on migrant entrepreneurship, gender issues, uh, Ula Hiti, which you know for sure uh, for her work on entrepreneurial identity, entrepreneurial education, to cite only some of, of, of her topics. And then Mora McAdam from, from DCU, um, who also worked on digital entrepreneurship, gender issue, women entrepreneurship. And then we also appointed um, a new social media editor because we thought that this is, this is an important issue. Um, publish, not only publishing, but also sharing what, what we publish with our audiences, uh, both on, on social media, such as Twitter, but also through podcasts, as I will show you in a couple of seconds. So our first, our first work um, regarded the aims and scopes. So entrepreneurship and regional uh, development has now a new aims and scopes. So, as a first step, if you would like to target this journal, I strongly uh, invite you to check our website and read this new aims and scope, because it indicates quite well, I think, what we are looking for as, as a type of paper. So we, of course, um, look for both conceptual and empirical papers, but what is the most important thing for us is that we want interesting, thought-provoking papers. And we are looking not only for rigorous, methodologically and theoretically rigorous papers, but also for what we call courageous papers. And I personally think that courage is a virtue we do not emphasize enough you know, in academia in general. Because if we look at publishing as a social practice, this social practice constructs over time in a space of tensions, uh, tension between conformity, uh, respecting the rules and <laughs> current practices and differentiation or uniqueness. So what we are looking for is of course, papers who fit the journal scope, papers who are rigorous methodologically and in terms of theoretical framing, but also papers which have the potential to bring something new, to challenge current assumptions, sometimes look with new eyes at old phenomena. And in terms of levels of research, we are open to entrepreneurship in all its types and forms. So if you are looking at micro level phenomena, focusing on entrepreneurs, this may bring new knowledge to the fore. But if you are rather interested in meso-level phenomena, entrepreneurial firms, if you are looking at cultural uh, level, at the social, political level, regional level, this may also be of interest uh, for entrepreneurship and, and regional development. Also important for us is that when we are speaking about contribution, we are not speaking about just adding a, 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 another variable, you know, to uh, let's say entrepreneurial intention models. This is, this is not what we consider as a theoretical contribution. So we look for papers who, um, who aim to extend current theories or even to build, create new theories inductively, uh, for, for instance. But of course, you may, may do it through quantitative work as well. And to do so, we are open to contributions anchored in, in different disciplines. So not only entrepreneurship or management sciences, but also social sciences and humanities. 
because for us, context matters. And I may say layers of context matters. So not only spatial or temporal context, but also social cognitive context, relational context. So in order to take into account entrepreneurial phenomena in context, as plural, of course, uh, building through uh, different disciplines or taking interdisciplinary approaches may be of help. And so I will, I will stop here regarding aim, the aims and scope, just a couple of words about the geography of our submissions. So we have mostly um, submissions from European countries, but also coming from uh, the United States, coming from Asia, and we want to keep uh, this, uh, this, global, this global reach. And in terms of inspiration, I also invite you uh, all the doctoral students to take a look at this fabulous paper. It's an old paper, you know, that's interesting, uh, Davis, uh, Davis paper. Um, and he explains very quite well what it means actually to build an interesting paper uh, by taking a, uh, an epistemological perspective on what interesting means and what challenging uh, former theories mean. How, how can be how this can be achieved actually, empirically or conceptually. Now, a couple of words about our communication. I also invite you to check not only the Taylor and Francis official website, because we are a Taylor and Francis journal, but also another website, which, uh, which uh, we, we set up um, this, this last month. So uh, entrepreneurship and regional development. And here you may see uh, our podcast. So podcast with the editorial team, but also podcast with the authors. All published papers are followed by a podcast with uh, one of the authors explaining their contribution, explaining the focus of their paper and answering uh, the questions of uh, Vincent Lefebvre. Also, uh, check check uh, ERD on uh, Twitter. Oh, we have a, a Twitter account, and you can find there all, all the news uh, of the of the art of the journal. Our LinkedIn account, and as I told you, our podcast on Spotify, Google Podcast, and so on. And now, just a few words about our news. So we have two awards. We will um, have two awards in memory of Alistair Anderson, which will be uh, provided um, two uh, conference papers um, submitted to ISB, ISB conference and RAND conferences this year. What we are looking for, we are looking for papers influenced by the work of Alistair and which will, of course, also offer a strong theoretical contribution to entrepreneurship. And what those who will have the win this award will, will receive from us is a fast track uh, opportunity for publication in our journal and, of course, mentoring from the editorial team. And then two special issues. Coming, coming up. So if you, if you have ideas, if you want to submit a paper to one of these special issues, please do it. So the first one is a special issue in memory of Professor Alistair Anderson, Social Perspectives of Entrepreneuring, uh, coordinated by uh, two guest editors, Sarah Jack and Johan Gadefors. So this is a short timeline. Um, we expect uh, submissions for September 1st, because we would like to publish this special issue um, at the beginning of the next year, if possible, in the first issue of our next year. And then a second special issue on fiction and the entrepreneurial imagination, coordinated by William Gardner, Matthias Nordquist, Jennifer Schultz, and Roy Sudebi. For this, you have more time. Uh, first, we'll have a virtual uh, conference, uh, paper development workshop in November this year, and then um, the deadline for the full paper submission is June uh, next year. And this is all. So if you have any paper idea, if you would like to ask a question before submitting your paper, please do not hesitate to send me a message. And I strongly encourage you to submit your best work to entrepreneurship and regional development, your courageous work. 
Many thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Maruna, all said. Uh, so let's go to Martina from the Management Learning. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you to my predecessors. I'm also going to share a screen and take you through my presentation, although I'm very conscious that uh, the, the time is sort of um, against us a little bit. Just let me just check with the organizers. We need to finish by uh, 1 30 uh, yes. European time, right? So, just to make sure there's time left both for demo and for some uh, questions, I'll, I'll, I'll just really go quickly through this slide. So, please forgive me if I'm rushing a little bit and feel free, of course, to put any questions in the, in the chat. So, management learning, what's important about the journal? Uh, many things are important, but one of the things that I'd like to, uh, to draw your attention to is this, uh, this uh, subtitle, the Journal for Critical Reflexive Scholarship on Organization and Learning. That is really quite crucial to understanding what sort of manuscripts we are looking for within management learning. Uh, there is a, a whole uh, history behind the journal, as all, all of the journals which, which, uh, which we, are, we are hearing about today. Uh, management learning has been around for a while, over 50 years, uh, has got different types of submissions. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's the same with, with other journals, so, but something that my predecessors perhaps haven't been uh, uh, focusing on. Think about that. There are different types of papers that you can submit to, to any journal, and management learning has got these three types. There are so-called full papers. These are the, the traditional uh, research papers. Then there are what we call provocation essays, which are shorter, polemical, uh, addressing more current issues, sometimes more controversial issues. They are, they are up to 6,000 words, and of course, are book reviews as with other uh, other journals it is sometimes a really good idea when you are early in your career when you are a doctoral student uh, to for example start your engagement with a journal by writing a book review it's a nice nice opportunity to get uh, uh, to get published potentially uh, and 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 uh, uh, perhaps at a time where it would be maybe unrealistic yet to get published with a full um, full research paper if you haven't completed the research yet. Of course, there is a double blind reviewing process, which means that you don't know who the reviewers are and the reviewers don't know who the authors are. Uh, there is an international editorial board, which you can obviously check on the website who the members are and they are very, um, there's a global, global um, reach in that sense of the editorial board. A part of the ethos of management learning is to actively support PhD students and early career scholars. We definitely want to uh, want to um, publish work by early career scholars. We have also published work about the careers of early career scholars. So have a look at management learning. You are likely to find something that will resonate with you. We've had publications, for example, addressing uh, learning from the perspective of a of, of, of a PhD researcher, but very kind of original sort of work published. So have, have a look at that. Um, we, we issue various awards, such as best paper, best reviewer, best book reviewer. And when awarding those kinds of awards, we are uh, quite conscious of wanting for this to go in particular to early career researchers. We are not driven by rankings, but we, 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 we follow, we try to make sure that we are well graded within the different rankings, because we know that this is something that uh, informs people's decisions around where to submit. We are currently graded three in the Chartered ABS um, Guide to Journal Quality, and we are A on the Australian Business Dean's um, Council list. Um, aims and scope of the journal. Um, very quickly, it's important to remember that there is this, this idea of reflexivity and criticality of scholarship that is particularly promoted within management learn, learning, um, which means that, for example, when you when you think about the methodology that you are applying, your, your, your epistemological position, that this is something that management learning will encourage you to explicitly state uh, in your paper rather than something that, that, that is just implicitly assumed. Uh, the best way to see how this is done is, of course, to read a few, a few articles so you get a feel for the style of the journal. And there is a little bit about the metrics here. Uh, I think uh, similar to, 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 to what Michael was saying about the journal that, that he is editing, we have, for last year, we had about 20% acceptance rate um, in the journal. It varies over the last few years between 15 and 20%. I'm, I'm really pleased that we actually got to, to as, as high as 20% last, um, last year. It's really the best um, 
thanks to the quality of our authors, but also the quality of, of the reviewers' work and our uh, editorial team as well. Um, we also have an international uh, reach. Here is some, some basic information about the impact factors and downloads. I think what I'd like to say, um, just in addition to what others were saying, uh, I would like to encourage you to set, definitely sign up for and follow on Twitter, Management Learning, follow it on Facebook. There is a lot of exciting um, material that you can find there, a lot of updates. If you want to inform, be informed about special issues, about the latest articles, about things that are of interest to the community of the journal, a good way to do this is by, by engaging via social media with the journal. Um, we have two co-editors in chief, uh, Todd Bridgman, who is based in New Zealand, and I'm based in the UK at the University of Essex, and we have an editorial assistant who is uh, supporting us, she's based at the Open University. We also have a very diverse international team of associate editors, I don't have the time to go through through everybody's names and positions at the moment, but, but you can see from the list that people are based in different countries. Uh, what's I think quite important is that in management learning, when you submit to the journal, you get to choose nominate the associate editor who you would like to handle your manuscript. So from that perspective, it might be well worth having a look at, at the associate editor's profiles, their research interests, what they have published on, because that will probably inform your decision as to whom to nominate as the associate editor to handle your, uh, your manuscript. Uh, we also have that section provocation essays, as I said, who, which has a separate editor as well. That's Deborah Bruis from Bath. We have a book reviews editor. We have social media editor. All of them can be contacted if you have particular queries regarding their, their area, such as the uh, if you'd like to write a provocation essay or, or a book review um, for the journal. Now, what's important, that's really very much the same as with other journals, you know, it needs to be positioned in the literature. You need to be clear about what concepts and theories you are working with. If it is an empirical paper, you need to position it uh, methodologically. In management learning, what's important is that, that there is this kind of idea, something interesting, something novel you want to say. And that is really important um, to us. And of course, methodology matters, but just a methodological contribution is not something that we are that interested in in management learning, right? A paper which is particularly focused on the method is probably well better suited um, somewhere else. Um, we want our papers, the papers published in management learning to be excited, to be written in a way that is accessible, that is direct. So these are the sort of questions that I have for you. And of course, this is being recorded, so you can have a look later on. It's a kind of checklist of what to do when you are checking your, 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 your paper prior to submission. And um, I'd say make sure it is written in a way that attracts the reader, that is appealing to people, that is uh, um, going to make it a uh, standout. Of course, you want to meet all those uh, um, expectations regarding formatting that that goes without uh, saying uh, make sure you anonymize your paper that there is nothing in the in the properties of the of the file that that would say what who, who you are because it's meant to be anonymous that you don't auto plagiarize but Michael spoke about it already be prepared for revisions and for possible rejection and don't see it as a rejection I, I know that, I mean, we as editors use that vocabulary. I don't think it is helpful vocabulary. The published work that we produce is the kind of work that evolves all the time. And if you have a good idea, it's more about different stages of maturation. And the process in one journal is basically taking you one or two steps further towards publication of the piece, towards getting those ideas um, published, perhaps in a different outlet. So. I know that even, you know, we speak of uh, rejections, but really think about it as, as this is a, a process in that uh, development of the manuscript and uh, uh, not a rejection, right? I know it's not easy, so that's why I'm, 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 I'm emphasizing this a, a few times here. Uh, try to depersonalize it. Once the, once the text is ready, you're sending it out. You, there are various things you can influence prior to submission. Once it's submitted, you can't influence it. We try to do the work as professionally as we can. We try to choose uh, reviewers uh, amongst the experts, the best people to review the paper. But sometimes some reviewers will be more generous, some will be less generous. Sometimes the work needs much more extra work, sometimes a little bit more 
once it's out there, it's out of your control, right? So be prepared. You may need to change it or you may need to actually resubmit it, but to, to a different journal eventually. Uh, definitely get a feel for the journal as with all other journals. Read a few articles, read editorial introductions, especially as journals tend to evolve over time themselves as well. So something that was published five, 10 years ago um, might not inform you very well about what the current direction is. In terms of citing, it's always good practice to cite all authors that you are citing in a, re in a respectful way. Even if you are criticizing somebody's work, critique it uh, from an intellectual perspective, but don't dismiss it. Don't, don't do a character assassination, not the least because uh, uh, this is not very respectful, but also because this person might end up reviewing this manuscript later on. So, so be, be, be careful, be, you know, be, be scholarly, but also a little bit diplomatic there. Write a cover letter. A cover letter is important. These are things that people don't always pay attention to. They leave it at the, for the last minute. The cover letter is important because it allows us to see whether you believe you already know from the beginning what it is you are contributing. This is a bit of a, a pitch that the author, author is presenting to the editors. So make sure you spend some time on the cover letter. Make sure you spend time on the abstract as well, especially when we invite reviewers to review papers, they will see the abstract. If you haven't worked hard enough on the abstract, if it is sort of not, not informative and not grabbing attention, the reviewers will not want to review it. Or they will already have that kind of attitude, oh gosh, it's not going to be a very good paper. So please don't, even if you leave those things for the um, final stage, allocate an appropriate amount of time to that final stage, writing the, the, the abstract, writing the the cover letter really sharpening your introduction and your conclusions because these things really sell the paper okay and don't see revisions as i said as a, as a, as a burden see it as an opportunity to develop your paper even if it is if there is a rejection you should always get some feedback which will help you develop it further. Make sure, of course, when you have revisions to do that, you write a detailed response to reviewers. Very often these days, people tend to present a response to reviewers in the form of a table. So they pick point by point by point, each point made by the reviewers, and that's their left column. And then in the right column, they see they write responses, how they have responded to each of the each of the comments. And it doesn't mean that each of the comments has to be taken on board as in lead to the modification of the manuscript, but each of the comment has to be considered by you. And you need to show to the reviewers and to the editors that you have taken them into consideration. If you run out of time, ask for extension. Don't send back a paper which is not ready. This you're not serving yourself. Journals which have a, um, you know, in management learning, I can speak from the perspective of management learning, we have enough papers in the queue to be able to wait for your paper a little bit longer. No, journals which are competitive are not desperate to get those final versions, to get them printed. There are enough papers waiting, so you don't have to worry about that. If you are not able to complete your revisions in three months, ask for extension, and this is understandable. Life sometimes uh, presents us with circumstances, meaning that we, we don't always manage to do everything within the allocated time. If you, uh, if you uh, are asked to review, please review. Please say yes, we can only publish papers if we also act as reviewers, so I would like to encourage you to say yes to reviewing requests. Um, if you write a review and that is a really good experience of, of, of getting into the game, learning the game, seeing what other reviewers say, you get some insight into the editorial process by acting as a reviewer, be constructive, be honest, be fair. Uh, uh, feel good about the fact that you're writing a review because nobody's going to pay you for it. <laughs> the only thing that you get are thanks from us, your own sense that you've done something good for the community. And chances are you will get the uh, best reviewer award and you will be um, invited to join the editorial board, which is of course a nice reward at the end. But we need to find intrinsic motivation to do reviews because otherwise um, the system is not going to, to work very well for all of us. I've got some examples here of papers that were recently published just to give you a, a, an idea of how broad the scope of papers in management learning is. 
uh, we look at learning in different contexts. So one paper here looks at um, city police context and learning from the perspective of, of, of a police force. Uh, organization. Another paper that I've picked on, this is a, a drawing on a from a sample of NDA students in Pakistan. So there is a, a there is a, 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 a geographical context and also a context of student stroke uh, executives. Uh, then the uh, third paper drawing specifically on the concept of on the concept of learning atmospheres because atmospheres is one uh, idea from a broader organization studies that has recently got, uh, attracted a lot of attention. Um, what I'm trying to say here in particular is that management learning uh, publishes work that has a connection to learning uh, with a broad understanding that learning happens in different types of contexts. And it looks at learning from a variety of uh, perspectives Usually, um, if there are some issues, some theories, some concepts that broader organizations that is scholars use, uh, be sure that management learning will be writing, authors will be writing about those issues from a learning perspective as well. Here are some examples of uh, recent and forthcoming special issues. This is again just for you to get an idea and, and to illustrate what I have just said about how. Uh, what happens in organization studies tend to be reflected in the publications in management learning. So we've had uh, work on um, identity that the, the latest special issue will be will be published on identity and learning not to be different. That's that's coming up very soon. Uh, yeah, you have a, you have a whole list here. I, we don't have time, so I won't be reading them out. But you can you can have a look later on. And more than anything else. I'd love you to really engage with the website, view the submission guidelines, sign up for the alerts, follow us on Twitter, uh, befriend us on Facebook, um, and then of course, if you'd like to be a reviewer, I'd like you to be, I'd like you to to sign up to become a, a reviewer as well. Uh, that's all from me now. I hope there is still some time left left for for Dima and for questions. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, we're going straight to me. I... Mahir, you are muted. Sorry, is it? Yeah, yes, Dimo, we can we can continue it with you. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Mahir. Wait, can you hear me well? I just I changed. I had to change mics and uh, okay. We can hear you well, Dimo. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, so, so, sorry. I think I I, I was speaking uh, muted. Huh? Yeah. It, it happened to me. It happened to me. So sorry. Uh, I, I want to thank Martina. And what I said is that the uh, the comment to be prepared for a vision. It's one of the best that I I took note. And I always say to my PhD students to uh, that the game starts seriously for publication when we receive the first revision. So this is really important. Uh, uh, to consider. Dimo, we still have time. Uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, hear from uh, uh, the Journal of Business Venturing Insights. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, good morning from me to everyone. Um, I, I presume you can see my screen. Uh, you can only yes. you can only assume that's happening. And, and if, if no one's saying otherwise, then I assume that's the case. So uh, it, it's great to be here and, and share some thoughts about journal business venturing insights. In a way, it's it's appropriate that I go last because the the journal is very different in many ways, and I hope to to convey that across to uh, all of you. Um, the journal is new, uh, so you could think of it as a startup uh, or as a, as a as a child that's about to go into school. Uh, no matter depending on how you look at it, but the journal is six years old, it was launched at the end of 2014. And uh, perhaps it's interesting to think about um, the events around launching the journal. It was born out of, uh, of experience and I, I was, I was an uh, associate editor with journal business venturing before that in small business economics. And I've been an editorial board of, of many other journals. And it was the experience uh, at one of our um, entrepreneurship conferences in Babson in 2013 
uh, when I saw quite a lot of papers with very interesting work, very interesting data, uh, that they were trying to say things, and they were really struggling in trying to package those papers with a theory that's presented upfront and trying to trying to convey a theoretical contribution where it, where it was clearly that the papers came into their own when it came to the data section. So it was one of these things when you would look at the framing and hear and, and the, the theory becomes really distorted in how the authors talk about it. And then they relax and come alive when it comes to the methodology, when they describe their setting and what they're actually studying. So it was clear to me that there was a sense of a, of a sometimes a, a, not, not just misfit, but sometimes it's very difficult to do work that is interesting, but fit within existing theoretical schemas, particularly when a lot of journals are looking for theoretical contribution. And so this is how the idea of JBVI was born. And it was simply with a simple message, uh, not theory first, but theory last. And theory last in the sense of let's explore something, let's have some insights and reflect and speculate on what this may mean. So the goal is on, on asking questions uh, in a forward-looking sense, rather than providing uh, conclusive and definitive answers. So the emphasis in the journal is on insights that are necessarily preliminary uh, and things, hunches that we're exploring that are born out of data and would like to communicate, or, or born out of simply theoretical speculation and would like to communicate to people. Um, so here are the uh, editorial theme. We've grown over the years. So when the journal started, it was only me as the, as the founding editor in chief. And as our submissions grew, uh, we had Pablo Munoz uh, join us as associate editor a couple of years ago, and uh, Andreas Kukertz joined us last year. So we've been expanding the editorial team, just like any venture, you expand as, as, uh, as business grows, if you, so to speak. And last year we, we hit over 400 submissions uh, you might say this was this was COVID related. We had an unusually high number of submissions, but this year we're on track. We already had 250, so it looks like we may hit 500 submissions for the year. So things are things are growing uh, very very fast. Now, if you, if you have to take a few things away in terms of how to know the journal, one is its aim is to enhance the conversations among scholars and practitioners, and the idea is to have a, a forum for rapid dissemination of research related to entrepreneurial phenomena. So two things uh, we'd like, I'd like to emphasize here. One is rapid, and the other one is entrepreneurial phenomena. So I'll explain rapid in a moment. Uh, and entrepreneurial phenomena, the general, we're, we're open to different disciplines, perspective and methods. The only thing that we, we ask of a paper is, does this relate to entrepreneurship? Uh, and there's quite a lot of papers that, that don't. And sometimes I try very hard to see the link and would communicate in a, in a disk projection that this could be made relevant to entrepreneurship, but it's not something that the paper does. Beyond that, it's a simple question that does the paper offer a novel insight? Uh, does it say something new? Uh, and just to illustrate the idea of, of uh, rapidness, we launched an initiative last year, uh, right after the COVID, uh, uh, COVID broke out. It was called Rapid Response Initiative. And uh, we, 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 we had, this was spearheaded by Pablo Munoz. And the idea was for practitioners and people at the front line who had a problem, they came and they, they teamed up with a, with a group of academics. So the practitioners come with a problem, the academics come with the, try to link that to theory and insights that they have, and they would put together a submission and they would take that through the journal uh, very quickly in case in, in, the, in the spirit of our rapid dissemination. So by, by the end of last year, we managed to have already six, seven papers uh, that were responses to COVID. Uh, and of course, the experience with, with other journals is that they have journals going through the pipeline and, and only now we see COVID papers emerging and some of them are still in the pipeline. And of course, by now um, we, we've already moved on in thinking about things post COVID. So this is a, an example of, of uh, speed. Key features. So there's three things uh, I'd like you to take away. One is short papers. So papers need to be up to 12 pages uh, in main text. So that includes um, references and uh, tables with figures. Uh, and this is very important because it forces you to communicate your insights very clearly and forces you to think about a different style of writing that would make the paper engaging and easy flowing for the full 12 pages. Um, fast. So there's, there's three things uh, that we do. We use a single reviewer 
we asked them to write a one page review of up to five up to five areas that could strengthen the paper so five suggestions for improving the paper and we use one round of review so what that means is that um, when a paper comes we make a decision of whether to send it out uh, or not so we make that initial judgment and when it goes out to review and we get the insights to the re uh, when we get the, re the the response from the reviewer the paper either gets rejected or it gets conditionally accepted uh, in in rare cases, we ask the authors to do one more round of revision, but, but we handle that uh, only as, as editors. We don't this, send this back to the reviewer. And this is all in the spirit of, of keeping things fast. So our initial goal has been to, to have three months from the time you submit the paper to the time it's accepted and appears, uh, it appears online. I'm pleased to say that we're, we're just over that, looking at our uh, live to date statistics. I think we're at at nine to six days from initial submission to the actual acceptance of the paper. So we're just keeping to that uh, three months uh, aim that we've set for the paper. A few other things that might be helpful uh, from the papers that come in, uh, roughly half get desk rejected. Uh, and there's three main reasons uh, that, that this happens. One is that they have nothing to do with entrepreneurship. So, so people sometimes just send papers to journals without really mindful of what the journal is about. So there, there are those. There are also papers who are long, so they haven't quite read the aim and scope of the journal and don't realize that the journal looks for uh, short papers. So when they sell a, fu a full length paper, we would send this back and ask if they are willing to shorten it to 12 pages, we'll consider it again. Uh, and there are also papers that when you read it, um, that novelty is not, is not apparent. So we have to make a judgment given that we're gonna use only one reviewer and one route of review of whether the paper has that element of, of, of novelty. Uh, and that is something that we communicate to the authors uh, very clearly. Usually if a, a, paper, a paper can be in a well-researched area. So if it makes no acknowledgement and no connection to existing literature in that area, then that's a clear sign that the novelty is not quite there because simply the authors have not positioned the paper in the, in the field. Once the paper passes through that desk rejection screen, then we, you can work it out that it has roughly a one in two chance once it's sent out for review. So we, we accept just under a quarter of the papers. And I, the goal in my mind is, is uh, for, for papers of this type, for journal of this type, you know, between 20 and 30% acceptance rate is actually quite, because we're looking for preliminary insights and we're looking for fast insights that we can disseminate and hopefully they can generate uh, additional research questions. The last thing I, I wanted to share with you is this is, um, this is from Elsevier's site score. We're, we're in the queue for an impact factor as a new journal. It's something that's outside of our hands. Uh, our application has been out now for close to three years. Uh, and this is, as you know, Impact Factor is run by Clarivate and, and they have their own process of, of how long it takes for paper to get the factor. Uh, but Elsevier run their own, uh, their own um, score, the site score, and that's same methodology as the Impact Factor, except they use a four-year window rather than a two-year window. And you can see clearly two things uh, in this, the value of the site score, um, so the journal was launched at the end of 2014. So 2018 is the, is the only, the first year in which we have a full four year period. So you can see a, a clear growth in the site score of the journal uh, year to year. But the second thing is you can see is the journal very quickly settles. This is the red line in terms of being in the top quartile of journals. So the percentile is around the 80th of percentile. That means it's in the top 20% of journals in terms of their site score. So it clearly positions the journal in in the top uh, quartile level. Uh, the journal is already um, recognized in, in a number of institutions on their institutional lists as, a, as an A journal. Uh, and we're also waiting from the um, ABS list. Uh, we put in an application for that. That only happens every few years. So, so that, that's pending as well. But all the signs and trends are, are there. In terms of um, what authors need to take away is, is mainly have something interesting to say and look for creative ways to say it. There's not really, there's not really formula here. We've had tip, uh, topics from whether Ai Weiwei is a social entrepreneur to the relationship between crime and entrepreneurship to someone speculating whether on, entrepreneurship can have an antisocial uh, element 
to people exploring the link between ADHD and entrepreneurship uh, to using entrepreneurship as a way of um, uh, aiming recovery in deprived communities to uh, looking at, at uh, you know, responses to COVID, as I mentioned that as well. So really unbounded range of topics, all united uh, by this sense of saying something interesting about uh, entrepreneurship. So thank you for your uh, attention. I'll stop here and that gives us, I suppose, a few minutes for questions. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dimo. Uh, I think we have a, a, a question. Uh, I saw it in the, in the, the chat box. Uh, one of the question, when is the right time to start reviewing for a journal in relation to the PhD journey? What are the prerequisites for, uh, do we need to have published it in the paper to be a reviewer? Is, is that a question for me or for? For, for, for yeah, 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 go, go ahead, uh, Dimo, or for Michael or uh, Martina or, uh, yeah. In, I mean, for us in particular, in the first instance, we, we look at the pool of reviewers, people who publish in the journal, we automatically think of them as, as available reviewers. Uh, beyond that, um, it, it's about being able to access the person, I suppose, in the, in the, in the systems that we use and in, in trying to search for reviewers. So you have to have, there, there needs to be a, a record of you somewhere with publications or other uh, work that would designate the type of uh, the, the type of work that you do. Uh, so it's never too it's never too early to start being a reviewer, and and I, I would I would I would suggest that it's one of the best ways to get to know a journal is to is to start reviewing for it. In fact, we expect people to contribute as reviewers because that's one of where the systemic pressures are coming in. Is really 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 a challenge now to find reviewers because everybody is getting. Uh, request to review from all kinds of different journals. I probably get five requests a week uh, on top of the, 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 the papers I have to handle as editors. And it's, it, it pains me to have to say no, but at some point you have to recognize that, you know, with limited amount of manpower. So this is a, a real pressure for the um, journal system as a whole. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I have a question, but because uh, Dimu, you you talk about impact factor, but uh, maybe uh, uh, the other guesses. What are important impact factor for editors? I I'm not sure. What are important impact factors? Yeah, do, 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 yeah. Do 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 you focus a lot on the impact factors? We, I, I don't like to focus on an impact factor, uh, but I get, I get emails now ev almost every week about people asking me about the impact factor of the journal. So it's the reality of the academic promotion and, and, and review system uh, that institutions want to make judgments about the quality of research, not by reading the paper, but by judging the journal in which the paper is published. So we, we respond to that institutional pressure by, by, um, talking about the impact factor of the, of the journal. Uh, but I think every paper should speak for itself. You know, we read it and we find it interesting. We should not rely on, on uh, metrics like this. However, the reality is, just like when you, you wanna go and find a plumber, you wanna look at ratings, you can't really talk to all the available plumbers out there and, and you have to economize an effort. And that's, these are the shortcuts that institutions are, uh, are using in trying to make uh, the decisions that they do. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dimo. What about uh, uh, you, Michael, uh, our final comments? Uh... Yeah, just, just to add um, to what Dimo was saying about the impact factor, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's a reality. Um, it's, it's, it's a benchmark that, uh, uh, you know, both authors and institutions will use and so on, uh, but, but I'm also very much persuaded by, you know, the importance of focusing on the work as it's presented to you. And I would really try and emphasize that as much as I can uh, to the audience here today. I mean, when we get a paper, um, you know, after it's processed by, um, um, by the team and so on, and it comes to, to me or to one of the editors, I mean, our emphasis in the first instance is very much focusing on what it is the author is trying to to communicate here and the extent to which we think these ideas 
will get attraction within the system for the journal and uh, likely be favorably reviewed. So, so I try to emphasize that very, very much as opposed to the, the metrics uh, that inevitably surround us. And I suspect it's the same for the other, the other editors here, but they are a reality both for authors, for institutions, et cetera. And I think we have to just, uh, we have to, to, to deal with those. Yeah, thank you. Maruna? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll answer exactly the same. I think that we function, you know, on two systems. One is the academic market. We function on a market, so as a journal. So, of course, we are uh, interested in knowing what is our impact factor, because based on this, we will attract better papers potentially better authors. So this is a fact. But at the same time, when receiving papers, we evaluate each of them individually based on its own qualities and potential interest, uh, level of novelty and contribution. So uh, this, these are, these are two, two different processes. So we don't uh, ask ourselves every, every, every day, every evening, uh, what is the potential impact this paper may, may have? You know, we, we wonder what is the degree, what is the contribution of this paper? Is it an interesting paper? And then of course we decide to either uh, send it to reviewers or, or not, because then Papers have then their own life, indeed, you know? Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. M Martina? Yeah, I have nothing to add to what others have said. Pretty much the same, you know, it's, it's the realities that we, we are in. We, I think that when people become editors, they become editors because they are passionate about the topic. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe uh, the editors I know are people who are want that, uh, that uh, journal to... To, to produce interesting work and they are passionate about the topics, the, the kind of passion in your heart is doesn't tend to be a passion for maximizing impact factor. So it's not a surprise that we give you this kind of answer as, as, as editors, but uh, at the same time for a journal to grow, it needs to do what, as, as Dimo has said, it needs to be kind of appealing to people who have uh, to convince the promotion panels that the work they do is, is good quality. So, so we are so, you know, we keep an eye on that. Yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I'm not seeing other questions. Mean, do you have any clear comment or question for the audience? Oh. And thank you very much for all the, the comment that you are putting on the chat box. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much for chairing this session wonderfully, Mahir. Thank you so much, everyone, all colleagues, uh, Michael, Dimo, Miruna, Martina, and all of our students who have been uh, contributing to the debate in the chat, as well as asking the right questions. I guess this is all we can do, because sometimes there aren't many answers to some of the questions, but um, this, is, this was a wonderful, very, very useful session, very insightful introductions to the journals. Uh, that you are representing and uh, I, I do hope that uh, it's given a, a kind of like a sense or, or some encouragement to our uh, students to, to send it, to consider sending their papers. I can see, all right, yes, Dimo has already answered the question. I was just seeing a question in the chat, but Dimo has kindly, um, yeah, answered that. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's lovely, that's great. So thank you everyone, I'm conscious of the time and we do, we do all need a lunch break. Um, although <laughs> I wish I wish we were having this in the beautiful city of Montreal in kind of I don't remember the jazz festival and the, the 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 beautiful people and the streets of Montreal. But there we go. But there will be times, I guess, we'll travel again. And until then, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Stay well. And uh, thank you so much for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Thanks so.